Welcome back. All right, so if you want a reason not to trade the number 11 pick this year if you're Vancouver, this is why. This, to me, is, is exactly why. So uh, the Vancouver Canucks, according to Elliot Friedman, he's he's reporting this, and we'll see what happens, but Ekman Larson is headed to a buyout. So he's going to... The buyout costs, according to Cap Friendly, $19,333,333. So he's going to get paid. Ekman Larson's going to get paid. Up front, you get that money, and then you're a free agent. So, um, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, and it's a cap penalty for the Canucks that's going to go on for a long time to come. Not DP Atro length, but quite the length. It's eight years they're going to have this cap penalty. So, it does save them this year. $8,333,333 is what it saves this season, right? So, the Vancouver Canucks, a team over the cap for next year, I'm guessing that Alvin or Rutherford sat down with Francesco Aquilini and said, look, we have to do this. If we're going to get a number three center, if we're going to fix this team, we have to do this. So we'll see what else was on my board of 32 teams this morning. A team's going to fix immediately so that that video no longer applies. But this this helps now, but it hurts later, right? And we know this with buyouts. So, which is why uh, buyouts, others have been discussed, but... This is, this is the first. We'll see if it's the only one. So this season, in 54 games, he had two goals, 20 assists, 22 points. He was also a minus 24. And it, it really just wasn't working. Now, my guess is that uh, if I had to say where Ekman Larson ends up, it feels like he's a guy that's going to end up signing for cheap in Tampa Bay, play on the bottom two, and win a Stanley Cup. Anyways, uh, that being said, the penalty is as follows. For this year, it's $146,667. So... That's almost nothing, really, right? Uh, Arizona gets a $20,000 penalty. So I don't know if they called Arizona and said, hey, we're going to be buying them out. Uh, 24 25 it becomes a little more substantial. $2,346,667. Three hundred twenty grand is the penalty for the Arizona Coyotes. And then for the following two seasons, it's $4,766,667 in cap penalty for the Vancouver Canucks. That is not nothing. And on the Arizona side, it becomes six hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Yeah, six hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't know why I have the two hundred there. Uh, but then from twenty twenty seven until twenty twenty thirty one, it's two million one hundred and twenty six thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars for the Canucks cap penalty, and it's two hundred and ninety thousand dollars of a cap penalty for the Coyotes. This was a contract that when they paid, when they traded for it was called one of the worst contracts in the National Hockey League. And I remember getting some flack at the time that, hey, Arizona's eating some of this. Arizona's retained some. So it's not that bad because he's still a top two defenseman, even though if you had seen him play the year before that in Arizona, because the interesting thing is the year before that, there were rumors that Oliver Ekman Larson might get traded, but he only wanted to go to two different teams. And that's where no trade clause helps you or no movement clause. And that Boston and Vancouver were the only teams he was willing to go to. Well, his contract was too rich for Boston. And I thought, well, Vancouver's not going to trade for him. And then the following season happened. He did not have a great year. And I felt like the Canucks had kind of dodged a bullet. And then the Canucks, who were under a cap crunch. Stop me if you've heard that one before. But they, they made a trade that seemed to help their cap at the time. But if you go back and you go back to that trade video, which is less than two years old. Um, I, I wasn't enamored with it at all, and there's a simple reason. So they acquired Ekman Larson with Connor Garland. Solid young forward, right? Fine. I like Garland. I think he's a good top nine forward. But they traded out Louis Erickson, Jay Beagle, and Antoine Roussel. These were contracts that were absolutely awful contracts, but they only had a year left. For Vancouver, they were a year away from having actual cap space and being able to maybe, I don't know, improve the team, right? being able to make things better. But because the Canucks were obsessed with, we have to make the playoffs, they felt like adding at Ekman Larsman meant adding a top four defenseman. That would help. And then Connor Garland, good young forward. And you're trading out three, three expiring contracts. And then there's the number nine draft pick, which Arizona used to draft Dylan Gunther, which at the time I thought, you know, this Gunther looks pretty good. But because of fans being as fans are, what's the comment you hear a lot? Well, we don't know if that picks are going to become anything. Uh, Gunther doesn't really rate as being a very highly... He's not going to be that good in the NHL anyways. He's he's just, eh, I mean, it's all right. It's fine. It's not a big deal, right? And 
the idea was, well, they're, they're getting rid of the Erickson contract, the Beagle contract, and the Russell contract. And that's really smart. But they got back the ekman Larson contract, which had so many years left on it. So now they're buying out the last four years of the contract, meaning that it's an eight-year penalty. So for the Vancouver Canucks, clearly, this is a move designed towards adding some cap flexibility uh, this coming season. They still envision themselves as a playoff team. They still envision that this team's going to be back in the playoffs next year. And, I mean, the jury's going to be out on that one, isn't it? It will be interesting to see who they bring in for that third line center spot, since that's clearly what they're keying on. That's what everybody's been saying, as well as what improvements get made to the blue line, which ekman Larson was supposed to help with, right? Uh, so this is, this is what's happening, apparently, and we'll see. So, again, if Friedman reports it, generally speaking, it's going to go through. And it means that for Vancouver and for Vancouver fans, for this year, there's not really anything to worry about. The good news is, for the following season, the salary cap is supposed to go up by a lot. But now the Canucks have $2.3 million less to spend next summer. And they have $4.7 million less to spend the following two seasons. Uh, $4.7 million, even with the increasing cap, that's a player. That's a player, maybe two depth players. And so for a Vancouver team that is, again, trying to get themselves into the playoffs... I'm hoping, fingers crossed on this one, they don't buy this contract out and add a bad contract to replace it, right? Don't don't trade out Tyler Myers and add a draft pick and then bring in a bad contract or two to replace them with. This has been Vancouver's problem for a long time. When Jim Benning was gone, my hope was that the bad contracts would be gone. We shall see. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, is buying out Ekman Larson the right call or not? How do you feel about that? And does this mean that now that trade becomes one of the, if not one of the worst in Vancouver history? There's a number of contra number of trades and contracts you could look back on with Vancouver and say, now that was bad. So that'd be quite the list video, wouldn't it? Anyways, I'm not doing that list video right now. Maybe that's a summer watching kind of thing, right? But let me know your thoughts. Is this the right move? Is this a great move? And what does this do for the Canucks moving forward, right? Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.